Here are four steps for surviving hot drops at Mega Mall. Presented by Fortnite Master. Everybody has their favorite drop spots. They know the loot, they know the building layouts like the back of their hand, and they know how to approach fights early on. But sometimes you need to change it up. And when you do, it can be hard to adjust to a new landing spot. This week's guide is on landing at Mega Mall. We're gonna go over how to land before anyone else, give some tactics for landing at each of the different spots throughout the area, explain how to approach early engagements, and suggest some rotations for when you leave. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. Before you worry about what to do after landing, you need to think about the landing itself. You want to land as fast as possible, so you can be the first one to whatever weapon or chest you're going for. To do this, you want to aim to deploy your glider at about 1.25 map grid squares away from your destination at the lowest elevation possible. This distance can vary slightly depending on how high or low you are when you're forced to deploy. For example, if the bus route looks like this, you're going to want to drop right here, glide down, and deploy right here. Or if your bus route looks more like this, you want to drop right here and deploy around here. The more you drop at a certain spot, the more you'll learn about spots you need to drop and deploy to get the best landing. After you deploy, make sure you take a second to check your surroundings. This will give you an idea of how many players are landing at Mega Mall, where everybody is landing, and how many are aiming for your same landing spot. Even if somebody isn't landing right next to you, it's helpful to know where they are so you can plan and execute early engagements better. Of course, it's also important to know if there's somebody trying to 50-50 the weapon you're going for, which is something you should avoid if at all possible. Mega Mall has a lot of loot, especially in the main mall area, so you should almost always have the chance to aim for a different weapon if you see somebody trying to 50-50 you. Now for the landing itself. Obviously, you want to aim to land on a weapon or a chest, so you have something to fight with immediately. Beyond that, let's break it down into specific landing spots at Mega Mall. To start, the main mall is a solid landing spot. There are a ton of open weapon spawns on the roof that you can see while gliding down, so it's relatively easy to get a decent weapon off the drop. And even if you don't find any weapons or somebody beats you to one, you can duck into the mall and look for one of the many other floor or chest spawns. Normally, it might be hard to lose somebody off spawn, but the mall is almost like a big maze, and it's pretty easy to lose people in. Unfortunately, that also means it's hard to navigate if you're not used to it. We'll give some tips to help with this in the next section, early game engagements. The various houses throughout Mega Mall are also good choices for landing spots. There are 5 total houses, 2 of them with basements. Let's get started with the biggest house, the one closest to the mall. This is a great landing spot because of its size and how much loot it has. There are 4 chests and plenty of floor spawns. You have the option to land on the roof, the second floor balcony, the main floor, or you can land at the garage and go straight into the basement. Your best options, in our opinion, are to land on the second floor balcony or head straight down to the basement. These options give you the best chance of getting a decent weapon right away. Landing at most of the other houses is similar, with a few exceptions like each of them only having two chests instead of four. For this house right here, landing at the front door is your best option. There is no chest spawn in the roof, but there is one right inside the front door. There are also a couple of floor spawns right away. The other house with the basement, right here, doesn't have any chest spawns in its roof either, so it's not worth landing there. Aim for the front door, then go up or downstairs. Either way, there is one chest spawn and a couple of floor spawns. Moving on to the house across from the playground, both chest spawns for this one are under the roof. One under the main roof and the other is under this little side roof, so landing on the roof for this house is actually a good option. Just listen for which roof has a chest under it and break in. Finally, the house at the eastern edge has one chest spawn in the roof and another inside the second level. If you're confident in your chest RNG, land on this little side part of the roof. There is a chest spawn right under there. Afterwards, break in or drop on top of the garage and you can break into the second level right where the second chest spawns. Note that even if landing on the roof is a good option, know that you could still opt to land on the ground floor if you prefer rolling the dice with floor spawns rather than chest RNG. The quickest way to do this is to land on the roof and drop down to the door. 
Once you land, it's important to make sure you know how to loot efficiently and thoroughly. We're not going to go into detail on how to do this, but one way to think about it is to loot from top to bottom or vice versa. Work your way through each level of the house until it's completely clear. If you need some help finding chests, you can check out our chest spawn map for Mega Mall in the description. Now, let's get into how to play early engagements. Remember when we told you to scout your surroundings when you're gliding down? That information is your first advantage for early engagements. <laughs> if you know somebody landed at a house next to yours, you can use that info to help make decisions. For example, if you land and immediately get a shotgun and SMG, you can push that house right away while they're still looting. Or let's say you don't find that great of loot. You know where not to go for more loot now. After you're done looting your initial landing spot, you want to actively scout your surrounding area to confirm where players went after landing. To do this, we'd recommend getting on the roof of your house. This puts you in a good high ground position to see anybody pushing you and gives you a better vantage point to scout from. Use this opportunity to look for players or signs of players. If you spot a player straight up, great, but know that there are other ways to locate players. Keep an eye out for any sign that a player has been somewhere, like if a part of a building is destroyed, fences have been farmed for mats, or any doors have been opened. This early game awareness and information is so crucial because initiating early engagements can give you a huge advantage. If you can surprise somebody by hitting them for half their health while they're looting, you gain a big upper hand in that fight. If you're still having trouble tracking and finding players using this information, try putting yourself in their shoes. Think about where they landed, take note of any signs that a player has been nearby, and try tracking the path that they took when looting. In Mega Mall specifically, you have the slipstream that you could take advantage of in the early game. You can use them to escape if you really need to, or you can use them to help scout the area from the outskirts. Enemies will be able to hear you coming if you push them using this method, but you should be able to land right on high ground, which makes up for it a little bit. The fights you get into early game are way different than mid or late game. Typically, nobody has an ideal loadout, nor do they have more than a couple hundred mats. The first thing you need to do to prepare for these fights is farm yourself a base amount of mats. Unless you land on a shotgun and decide to push off the rip, you should be farming 1 to 200 mats before pushing anybody. This may sound like a lot, but it can be achieved pretty easily with due diligence. To start, make sure you're farming all of the wooden furniture or boxes in the area you land. After that, look for structures and items with high concentration of mats, like wooden fences, metal fences, and wooden pallets. Once you have enough mats, it's time to push and get into a fight. Early game fights happen in one of two ways. The first being sort of a mid-range fight where two players start about one or two houses away from each other, one usually pushing the other. These are pretty straightforward. The only real advice we can give is to make sure you have the mats to push if that's what you're doing. Otherwise, try to position yourself on a roof or just hold high ground against the aggressor. The other types of fights are those close quarter engagements that happen in tight spaces within buildings. For these types of fights, you want to get comfortable using and editing builds in close quarters. These fights are much more akin to turtle fighting, so practicing and improving them could translate to late game skill as well. If you are unfamiliar with the area you're fighting in, however, places like the Mega Mall can feel like a never-ending maze to navigate. To be honest, learning to navigate these areas just takes time and practice, but there is one piece of advice we can give to help. The Visualize Sound Effects option, which we explain in more detail in a recent video, helps a ton for navigating and locating enemies in unfamiliar areas. Not to mention how great it is for finding chests that are hidden behind walls or tucked into random corners. Now that you've successfully cleared out Mega Mall, it's time to leave. Before you dip, however, you want to make sure you've got a good loadout, at least a few hundred mats, and enough shield. Usually, this is just a matter of looting and farming the area until you find enough of everything. One thing to watch out for is enemies coming from the slipstream. The slipstream surrounding Mega Mall makes it incredibly easy for players to suddenly land right on top of you when you're looting. The only real way to counter this is to always be prepared to build up the instant you hear a glider. If you're already on high ground, take shots as soon as you see somebody and get as much free damage as possible before they land. When you finally got everything you need, think about where you're going to rotate and why. 
The small forest to the north has trees for farming wood and mushrooms to top off your shield. It also has a campfire, as does the trailer park to the northwest, the broken house to the southeast, the house on the hill to the south, and the two houses to the southwest all have loot if you need something. Otherwise, you can get pretty much anywhere you want to go via slipstream, geysers, and the floating platforms. Thank you guys for watching this video. For those who are new to the channel, if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the others on the right side of the screen. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications for whenever a new guide shows up. So if you shared it with anyone else like your friends, family, or your pets. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One and we're out. Peace.